Welcome to a new video by DJSPRC. We have my Curiality Ender 3 Max. Time to do an upgrade? I was kind of forced to do it, in a sense. The heating cartridge decided to... Ah, again, I'm not even sure if that's what decided to die. Uh, basically got a code of uh, heating run out, something like that, if I remember correctly. Printer did not want to continue. I tried multiple things. Uh, maybe something in the firmware because it used to run perfectly and suddenly just decided to I say I quit. It did. Uh, can't even print, uh, basically. But what I decided to do when I was looking for another cartridge, uh, or the complete heating block inside, I decided to go with the Creality Sprite. Direct drive extruder, fully metal hot end and direct drive. Ordered this, got it. I did open it and looked at it. It is, on. it's awesome. It replaces this completely. Even the carry itself. Now, I just wanna make sure to explain in this video here, I show how to install it on the machine, how to plug it in the main board. Firmware wise, Creality has their own firmware you can use. But if you want a little bit more custom customability on it, you'll need to create yourself a Marlin. There is a couple of guys out there that made some kind of universal. Um, if you go on Reddit, you'll find a couple of guys. I did take a look myself. I have a Marlin custom made for this machine and the way I like it personally. Even right now, there is a custom Marlin on it because I do have the BL Touch. And I'll show you in a couple of seconds here what this guy here. There is a couple of models out there. Technically, it's just, there's two models, but there's options with it. I just put this right here for the moment. And let's open this box right here. When you do open the box, you're greeted with the Creality Manual. I would suggest take a look at it. There's some good information in it. Then you have the physical new carrier that will ride on your rail. They give you a spare nozzle and some mounting screws. Before I take the hot end out and they give you, they supply you with, uh, I would say close to three feet of wire. These are made for multiple machines of Creality to make sure you have enough length to get to your board. And you do have another wire that comes in it. Now mine did. Some people order these kits, uh, especially on Amazon, you'll find them at different pricing. Uh, be careful, if you do have a CR Touch or a BL Touch, to make sure this wire comes with it. If not, you need to buy it separately. I found this wire selling on Amazon by itself, uh, $19.99 Canadian. Now, for other people like the American side or even Australia, uh, UK, and so on and so on, you might be a different price. But 20 bucks Canadian for just a small piece of wire here. It's, yeah, it's expensive. But again, like I said, there's multiple kits out there that they do specify if it comes with it or not. And you can't really make your own. You could, if you do have the two smaller ends, you could make yourself one. And I'll show you why. And this is the physical, oops, the uh, hot end, direct drive. I'll just go a little bit closer to the camera. And this is in the back of the BL Touch. But the BL Touch, I mean the, wow, the extruder. <laughs> you have direct plugins for all that's on this unit here. Your two fans. This is the CR Touch with the BL Touch. The bottom one is for the stepper motor. 
the temperature probe and the hot end. Now, it doesn't come plugged in, pre-plugged in. I don't know why they do that. But like I was saying, there is two models of this. There's one that's made to go to up to 300 Celsius. And there's one that's made to stop at 260. But they don't always advertise it that way. One easiest way, if your wire that goes to your, your nozzle, okay, basically your heater here, is red, you have the 300 Celsius model. If it's white, you don't. And the other thing too, the, I can't remember exactly how it's called, but the main passage that's fully metal on the non-300, let's say the 260 one, has a Bowden tube inside. Now, I'm not sure if this one has it, but a couple of guys that I watched that that's what they were saying. But they all had the white model one. I got the red one for 300 plus. That's where I say you need to have a custom uh, firmware if you want to print over, let's say 260. Let's say you want to print a 300 for a certain material. Uh, you'll need that. Now, one of the first thing we'll need to do is start dismounting this guy here. And before I start doing this, you have to remember now your feet will come from top. You won't be able to use a side mount on the machine that is supposed to be here. You'll need to move it on top. I found on Thingiverse, you know, kind of a universal mount that you can put on top of your machine that you stock arm by removing the pivot point. This will insert itself and there is a screw in the bottom to hold it. And then you have your roll right here that's directly fed to the uh, extruder. I'll try to remember to put this in the, in the link below if you ever want to print it. And it uses the stock arm. I do have a modified one with bearings inside. Like I just showed dropping it. And your roll rolls on the bearings. This is nice too. This is easy to find on Thingiverse. One of the first thing I would do, start cutting these tie zip ties. Because all of this you need to remove. The only wire you're going to keep is basically for your stepper motors. That's this guy here and your sensor. The bottom one. Even this one here, it's gone. This wire replaces everything. And yes, you have to go in your firmware and your filament runout sensor, you have to remove it. Now, if you're just upgrading your machine for upgrading it, I do recommend that Heat it up to remove your any filament in your machine. I'm not sure if I do have any filament in it right now. I don't remember. I don't think so. But I'll find out soon enough when I remove my Bowden tube. I don't see any. Put that back if I ever need to use it again. Unplug the stepper. Now this is the wire for my BL Touch that I will need. Yeah, I didn't show you guys that. If you do have a CR Touch or a BL Touch, there's a mount right here to mount it directly on it. You don't need to 3D print something or use one of the stock mounts that came with it. Okay. 
Now I'm going to remove the BL touch out of the way. Without dropping it. Now, if, like I said, if you do have a BL touch or a CR touch, keep the screws. You'll need to reuse them. That's one thing they don't supply in it. Now, on the face here of the fan shrouds that protects the hot end, there's two screws on top. You'll need to remove that. Don't put those screws too far either. Now, you're going to grab them. Don't pull too hard because you might rip your wires for your fans. Just lay it on your gantry. And the reason we need to do this because we need to loosen the bottom screw. It is an 8 millimeter for you uh, metric guys. And a 3 mil for the main screw in the back. You don't want to remove it completely, just loosen it. You'll be able to push on it. And the centric nut that's on the other side will let you loosen it at the same time. Now, once you did that, you'll need to remove your belts. You just need to pull towards the back of the machine. You'll see two slots right here. Not sure if you can see them on the camera right now, but where your, uh, your belt rests. Now to make sure I don't lose the nut, I'm just gonna retighten this. Because I'm going to keep this, and it's going to be spare parts for my other machine that I have. So I do own two Ender Max 3s. And I do own a, an Ender 2 Pro too. It's a nice machine. Now make sure I don't lose my disc, these two small screws. You're going to put them back where they go. Because at the end of the day, nothing on this part you'll reuse. In my case, the hot end is no good on this guy anyway. Now, do I have close by? I'm just gonna you'll see in a second what I wanna grab here just to just basically universal I call them universal ties. They're just like small ties. I'm just gonna do this. just to hold the belts. Because <clears throat> now what we need to do is flip the machine. You could install the gantry on it right now if you wanted to, but I want to do it at the end. On your machine itself, you have one screw on top here. There's one in the back, you don't need to remove that one. Small one and just drop it on your table. Now we'll need to flip the machine on its side. Or your, the back if you want it to.
There we go. And you have three, three, bleh, three screws on that one. You'll have two small ones and one longer one. The two small ones are in front, the longer ones in the back. And once you did this, you'll have access to your motherboard. Don't pull too hard on this because you do have a fan. And there is a connector. You can disconnect it, like I just did, and put it aside. You will need to reuse it. Now you'll have all your main wires right here. I'm just going to disconnect my BL touch. Get it out of the way. Because what I did, I ran it in the, the loom here. I'll need to just pull on it after. We're not going to reuse that wire anyway. And unfortunately, I need to pull it separately. It's not really part of the other guys. When I did my BL, my BL touch, I just ran this guy separately in the loom without removing anything else. And there's my wire for my BL touch, put that aside. Now, you could physically pull on the other wires you have here, but I won't. There is a zip tie in the black kind of lumen. Lumen? Yeah this tape right here <clears throat> here we go and this black tape at the same time, I'm gonna, I'll, you'll need to remove it. Okay. Now, once that's done, you'll start to see the wires you need to unplug. Now the booklet does show you which one to unplug and which one replug. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to reposition the camera. You won't notice it. Now you'll notice the reposition, but you won't notice the time it take it took, should I say? And we'll be back in the jiffy. You'll even see in the book, if my camera wants to focus, there you go. They show you exactly where everything plugs in and everything you need to unplug. You'll need to remove the, uh, I think this is the DD, 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 thermistor, 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 whatever. You'll need to unplug that one. It won't be as easy as I just did right there. Simple reason. All of these are glued with hot glue. You'll need to grab a small pair of snips and kind of eat up the hot glue to remove it. Now 
Now we need to remove these two fans. And again, the same issue, there's hot glue. It is a pain. And I know why they do put the, put the glue there, but that would, you don't need to put that much. And got some out. Sorry if I'm blocking the view a bit here, but they really filled that hole. Can't even access it. And you don't want to create damage to your board. Here we go. Okay, unplug these two here. The two yellow and bluish. Okay, now if we look in the book, we'll need to remove the non-controller fan and the heating, heating tube. Heating tube will be the two red ones, kind of a, I call them a funky sleeve. Unplug these. Now we'll have the a non-control fan to unplug. You'll notice too it is with your the chassis fan, but the chassis, but the motherboard fan at the same time. Some videos I saw, it's not. For some reason, for mine, it is. Now, once you have that completely, you can pull the wires out of your sleeve. And you have your completely you complete hot end assembly out. Hmm. One screw cut. Put that as put that aside. You don't need that. Now what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to put a zip tie here with this guy holding this try to keep this clean and yeah and the other wire I forgot to mention to remove is your come on your extruder one that's in the corner here and for some reason this one here they really didn't want to come out they glued on both sides. I'm like, seriously? You unplug that one and just leave it in the case. Because I am not going to remove it. You could, but I went and zip tied this down. And I put a little bit of tape here. You could put some electrical tape if you wanted to. This is called Tessa tape. Uh, it is automotive tape that I have. I love Tessa tape. 
but once it's applied after a while, it's a B to remove, believe me. Now on your connectors that my camera won't want to focus on, let's see if I can use my hand to focus. There we go. They're all numbered. Here, K fan, fan plus and minus, heat. This is your CR touch or BL touch. Thermistor. Your extruder. And this is a non, uh, not in use. This is a future, maybe upgrade, they pre-wired in the, in, the, in the machine. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna plug in the easy one. Those are the ones that easiest to plug in. Make sure this is my extruder. Plug in here. This we don't use. And I'm just trying to keep this all neat at the same time. And this is thermistor. That's all the way up here. And you don't need to put glue back on it. This is the K fan. Now on the other one, you had two. You don't need, now you only have one. Now, if you do pull on your wires like I'm doing, please be very careful because you can rip these very easy. And there's another one here doing nothing. You don't use, technically there's two. Two plugs completely you don't use. Now the red one is the heater core that goes right here. Now on the heater core itself, shouldn't matter positive or negative, but I heard a lot of people sometimes they had to invert these. For some reason the board was kind of was crashing. Why I do not know. But it does. Okay, heater core. Bring it here and tighten this up. I do like they put a small connector on it. Don't remember the name of this connector, but I do like it. Makes for a better connection. Okay. Now, on the fan, it does matter if you if it's a positive or negative. I didn't mention where it was, but what I did I did take a, a picture of it. It'd be hard to see, but you'll see my positives right here and my negative on the bottom. No, oh, I do apologize. <laughs> my positive is on the bottom. And I need to make sure to replug this one at the same time.
put both in. And I'm just gonna pull on it to make sure. See, you only grabbed one. That's where you need to be careful. Sometimes these guys are pain to go in and sometimes they're super easy. See, that's solid. Now let's do the other one. And insert my negative. And my other one came out. Creality, if you're listening to this video, I doubt it, but if you ever do change your these wires, put them a little bit bigger and a little bit longer. I know you gave a lot of of link on the the main the, the physical this wire, but playing in the board, it's a pain. Okay. Didn't get it again. Like I said, this is one thing I don't like. I used to work with these kind of connectors and there's technically two places you can feed the wire. And right now I don't really see it where it goes in. Instead of making you guys look at me fight with this, I'll fix this and we'll be back. Okay. The worst part, you guys didn't notice really, uh, when I decided to say, I'll, when I said I'll try to fix this and I'll come back, I shut off the camera and <laughs> took two seconds, not even. I noticed I was a little bit too further down. Like I said, there's kind of two places on these connectors you can uh, plug in something. Uh, it needs to be uh, more closer to the top. I'm like, seriously, like I said, yeah. But now what I'm gonna do here, make sure everything's plugged in. Yes, that is, that's solid. Pulling on it doesn't come off. The hear the core, same thing. I'm gonna go back to my picture. Confirmed. Yes, that's perfect. I'm gonna relook my diagram. Confirm. Control fan, they do say the top one. That's what I did. Everything seems to be plugged in where it needs to be. Okay. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave a little bit of this wire inside here. That way nothing gets pulled. I'm just gonna do a little bit of wiring management. Sometimes what they do at the manufacturer is they don't really care. They want the machine out the door as fast as possible. Okay, I wanna do this. That way nothing gets pulled inside of here. This is gonna fall, but that's okay. Make sure all the extra wires I'm not gonna use are inside. And you saw, I don't know if you noticed, this is my Z that plugs right here, don't need. Because of the uh, CR touch, uh, or BL touch at the end of the day. 
Now I'm just going to make sure this stays pretty much flat. I'm not going to hit the other wires. Hold it, grab my screwdriver. This is a time that would be fun to have a third hand or somebody to help you. I'm just gonna tighten the top one, make sure everything moves. I'm not putting anything in this fan right here. I'm gonna grab my long one. There we go. I'm going to button this up, flip the machine up, and I'll show you the other part. Okay, basically what I did, my extruder wire and my filament runout wire, it's still in this loom. I'll keep it in there. I just fed it back in the loom and put a zip tie to make it look a little bit nicer. Now before I forget, I'm going to put my last screw here on top of my board. And sometimes I notice it doesn't want to align itself. There we go. Now what we need to do is remove some parts off the machine, like the filament runout. You could keep it there, but it's in the way of the main wiring. That's, I'm going to zip tie to this rail. Now there is on Thingiverse, people design some adapters to hold your wire to the, this gantry here. And I looked at them personally, did not like it because I feel like it, it's pinching the wire and kinking the wire at the same time uh, going to the, uh, the sprite head. That's why I personally don't, don't like doing that. Now, when you're removing the screw for this guy, watch it. It is under pressure. That does not want to come out right now. There we go, slowly. Always leave one screw in it. Reason is, because those screws, that's what holds your motor. You don't want your motor to fall on your plate. I'm gonna tighten the, this one in. That way I'll have access to that screw. one and one left and your extruder and motor comes out now don't get rid of this if one of your motors on your machine breaks you'll have a spare one Like I said, I'm going to keep this like this. My wires are going to come here and just go into the, the new Sprite. <clears throat> okay. Now it's time to install 
aka gimbal whatever how you call it there's more than one name i'm going to remove these let my belts flop i cut it like i could install uh the the right he called maybe this the gantry i could have done this in the beginning i wouldn't need to basically um tie those uh, belts but anyway. i'm going to do the same thing as the other one there's a lot of people showing the video you need to remove these you don't it's super easy to put back and you usually want to make sure she's snug okay now we're going to install our belts And this is where sometimes it could be a little bit harder. I don't want to really remove the tension here. I know it's doable to do it. You just need to make sure that your belt is all the way in, not halfway. There she goes. And this is the best time to adjust it. You don't want any slop like I have right now in mine. Don't have my, <laughs> my, my wrench close by. But that's something I can do after. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the extruder aka sprite and i'm going to install my bl touch this is something you can do in advance and like i said you need to reuse your screws or if you're getting this uh, sprite and you want to get the cr touch you won't all this will be won't need to do it here's our small wire I'm going to make sure it goes in the correct way. And it's attached. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to give the slight bend. I'll go to the camera and show you what I mean. I just basically, come on camera. Camera's having issues. Anyway, you'll, you kind of see it. I'm just gonna bend it on top of the bill touch. And the reason I'm doing this is I want it behind the fan here. And I kind of did it wrong one side. I'm going to screw it in and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay. 
Make sure to align that side. And the other thing too that's fun about the Sprite, if you need to do work on it or something, it's super easy to remove off the machine. Now, that's what I was saying. Try to put it behind, oops, behind the fan to be able to plug it in here. Again, Creality did not make this super easy to plug in. But it is doable. And I'm just going to do it like this. Because if not on the CR touch, it comes out here. And then you kind of go underneath, bring it here. Or you could go across the fan, but I'm not going to do that. Now, what you'll need to do. Sorry if you do hear that, there's snowbirds uh, flying ar around my place right now. Turn the machine this way here. You see the bracket. You'll need uh, your swoop, not this one, this one here. There's one, two, three, four places you screw this guy, but What's fun, it kind of sits on the gimbal itself. I can't even let it go. It stays there. Let's go to the first one. I even saw uh, people make a quick disconnect. Does change your measurements. But, I don't know, it's not something I'm going to start removing uh, kind of every five minutes or... Now, I'm not going to over tighten these guys. Once I did a complete heat cycle on the machine, I will just give him another snug. Okay, I guess I got an extra screw. Thank you, Creality. Now for the wire, like I was mentioning, yes, I do have extra long. And you open these, the rabbit ears, both sides, and you plug it this way. When you do push it in, it will kind of snap. And there's a holder in the back here that you physically feed your wire in it. Kind of make it look pretty. Now, what I do is I'm gonna bring this the highest as possible. I know you can't see it anymore, but, and I'm going to move the head completely at the other hand. And that's why, see the, the way the wire is, I don't think I'll, I shall, it'll never go this high. But if I ever do, it's going to be tight right here. making sure all the wires are good. Bring her back down. I 
I'm gonna tie her right here. That way it has a more than enough room to move this. Um, like I said, I'm just gonna put a zip tie like this, leave it loose. Now on top of my machine, I have the, the nuts already for this mount that I printed. Like I said, I'll put in the description and it's gonna go on top and my wire is gonna go feed itself directly in the hot end. Now, if you guys have any questions or comments about this, leave comments in, be in below. I'll be glad to answer you guys my best that I can. And like I said, this is only an install video. Firmware wise, there's not tons of it. There is the Creality one, but it's not 100% the par. But again, if you have any comments or questions, post them below. I'll be glad to answer you guys. Don't forget, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. It does help the channel a lot. I do appreciate it. Thank you for watching.